It seems like in my own classroom, and classrooms I've had the pleasure of visiting, there's always a few times of day where transitions get tricky. Whether it's children not knowing what the expectations are, or knowing where they are supposed to go, but no adult is present when they get there. Either way, things can quickly feel like they are spiraling out of control. This idle time often leads to children having challenging behaviors and valuable time being lost. Even as adults, if we aren't engaged in an activity, we will find something to do to fill our time. You know, we mess around on Facebook, we might uh, play a game on our phone or look at Instagram or Doodle and so on. The only difference between adults and children is we are a bit further along with our self-regulation skills. If children aren't engaged, it's natural for them to want to pester the person next to them or move for entertainment. While those transitions may only last a minute or two, they do add up. When we stop and think about all the times we are moving children from one activity to the next, we really become aware of all the time that's lost. Often programs are only two and a half hours and there is a lot of stuff we're trying to cover in that time. Being mindful of even the smallest amount of time lets us be more intentional in making sure there is something happening that builds children's skills and knowledge. In my own classroom and classrooms I have visited, there are a few times a day where transitions become more challenging. The first one I tend to notice is after breakfast or your morning snack. The children are finishing up at different rates and we're trying to clean up and the majority of the classroom that I've been in, large group, follows this time. So children are sent to the carpet to look at a book um, while you know we're picking up and finish wrapping up the meal. But they start out looking at the book quietly, but then they start to get a little silly. So if at all possible, an adult needs to go over as soon as there are two to three children at the carpet and really engage with the children and the books. Talk about their favorite books, look at the pictures, read to them, um, just to make sure that it's a, it's a very meaningful time and not just a time filler. Another idea instead of books are just having the children choose finger plays or songs. You can have them on a D-ring and they can come up and pick and hold it up and um, it could be a job for the day, you know, the song chooser or, or however you choose to do it. Um, and just do this until the majority of the children are at the carpet, but not all of the children need to be at the carpet for a large group to start. Another time that appears to get chaotic and sometimes frustrating is cleanup from centers. The children are engaged and enjoying the freedom of playing with materials they want and it's hard to stop and come back together as a group. Dimming the lights or ringing a bell and giving the children a five minute warning will help children start to wrap up what they are doing and lets them prepare for the transition. Once you've started the cleanup transition, use flannel board activities and games to speed up the process. One of my children's favorite games was called Little Mouse, Little Mouse. You had paper houses of different colors and a little paper mouse. And you'd have the children hide their eyes and you'd hide the mouse behind one of the houses. And then you'd say, Little Mouse, Little Mouse, are you in the... And the children would open their eyes and try to guess what house the mouse was hid behind. This is always something that the children wanted to be involved in and they would hurry up the process so they could come over and play a round or two before we moved on to our next activity. Lastly, lines can be bothersome for both children and teachers. It never seems to fail that everybody is all lined up ready to go and somebody needs to use the bathroom or we're trying to get on coats and hats and boots and it just takes a lot of time. To avoid children starting to get antsy while they wait for their friends to be ready to go, uh, sing a quick round of Who Stole the Cookies from the Cookie Jar. It's a game that involves active listening and they uh, get to decide you know, who stole them and they get to pick the next person. Um, and it's something that just keeps them occupied. Another option would be Mighty Minutes. If you use Creative Curriculum, these are really handy to use while you're um, waiting in line for the next activity. Uh, and if you don't have Mighty Minutes, you can easily make your own. They're just little rhymes, uh, activities, songs that just fill the time and work on, on basic skills. So transitions are inevitable, and it's something that children are going to have to deal with no matter where they're at. Whether they're at home with their parents or they're at school with us, they have transitions. And they're going to have them throughout their entire life. Um, for the time that they are with us, if we are intentional in the way that we teach these transitions and we make sure that they know the expectations for each step and that they have something to do uh, when they get there, then we can ensure that our day and our children's days run a lot smoother.